Hello and welcome. My name is Jonathan Reeves. I'm a practicing architect and also professional Vectorworks trainer. Over the years, I've specialized in providing professional training for architects all over the UK and also in Europe, specializing particularly in 3D and BIM workflows. Today, I'd like to share with you a few of the hints and tips that I've developed from my new book, Innovative Vectorworks BIM, which is available for download and I'll give you the link at the end of this video. So let's go ahead. I'll just scroll through to an example chapter. Um, here you can see my first chapter is actually featuring my own practice. And there's a really nice book. There's lots of information. We've got 122 color pages featuring practices from all over the UK, showing the kind of work that they are using Vectorworks for, particularly with emphasis on 3D and BIM workflows. So please uh, have a look at the free chapters on my website. You might find those interesting. They're available to download. Here we can see the first 11 hints and tips that I'm going to try and cover today's video. So I'm going to break it down for you into smaller chunks. So let's start off with hints and tips number one to five. So before you kind of do anything too exciting, the most important thing that any of you can do when you're using Vectorworks is to try to use both hands and to learn keyboard shortcuts. They're very straightforward and very easy to use generally with Vectorworks. So the first tip is if you hover over the tool, you will actually see the shortcut popping up in brackets. So it makes it very straightforward and easy to learn as you're using the software. There's another nice way that you can remember how to learn some of the shortcuts. So basically the logic is the number keys one through to zero will give you access to many of the drafting tools. And often when I'm working with my students, I set them a little exercise, which involves drawing as much as they can without actually clicking on any tools at all. So here we go. I'm going to basically click number one, which will give me the text tool, click, type some text, and escape to come out of text. There we go, number one. Two is the shortcut for the line tool. So this will enable us to access our line tool. Great. Three will be the arc tool. So we can also use the U key to modify the modes and move through the modes quite rapidly. So by using the U key, we can easily access many of the different tool modes that Vectorworks gives us. Okay, so let's move on to tool number four, rectangle tool. So rectangles, there's lots of different ways we can use the rectangle tool. And again, by hitting the U key, either in the process or even mid cycle, I can actually modify the tool while I'm drawing. Let's move on to number five. Five is the polyline tool. And again, this is extremely nice as we are able to use the U key to cycle through to the various modes as we're actually drawing the object. By the way, if you make a mistake, just backspace at this point. Another little tip for you here is if you click K, you will force the shape to close, which is actually quite useful. Okay, let's move on to number six. Six will be our circle tool. And again, if we wanted to, we could hit our U key to demonstrate that we can draw circles in lots of different ways. Fantastic. Seven is actually a tool called the visibility tool. So we may come back to that. Number eight is the polygon tool. So the polygon tool, a bit like the polyline tool really, apart from it's just straight lines. If you make any mistakes, you can backspace. Once again, when you click, if you click K, it will close the shape. Moving on, number nine is actually, of course, the wall tool, the architect's favorite tool and I'll be going into this in a lot more detail later on in the videos. Zero is, in a way, nothing. It's actually a loci, a 2D loci, which is actually a construction point and nothing more. Okay, good. So hopefully you've mastered that with numbers one up to zero give you the first 10 drafting tools. Later on, I'll show you how you can access another 10 or 20 shortcuts quite easily. Okay, good. So let's move on to number tip number two, using contextual help. Well, this is actually the tool, tip that I showed you early on. When you hover over the palette, it'll pop up, tell you the name of the tool, the shortcut in brackets, and also a little bit of information about the tool. 
But you can also go a bit deeper. So if you go to the help menu and go to what's this, you can actually click on a specific tool that you maybe need to gem up a bit on. So we'll go to the reshape tool and you can see it'll take a second or so, it'll fire up your browser and essentially it will link specifically to the 2D reshape tool. So very useful, gives me all the different modes in here and gives me lots of contextual help. Okay, so let's move on to tip number three, making the most of contextual menus. Now, this is very important. In Vectorworks, when we're drafting, we can use our capability of right clicking over the objects. <clears throat> so basically when I left click I just get a normal action, when I right click I'll get contextual menus popping up. Now what I've done is tuned up the workspace and again I'll show you this how to do this in a later video. But basically you can see that I've added lots of very useful contextual commands like add surface. Let's do another one. So let's take a shape here. Let's do clip surface and punch away at that shape, a bit like a pastry cutter. Let's also go for another one, decompose, basically breaks that down into lines. And if we wanted to, we can make some edits here. Let's just trim that one away. And let's just select them all and let's right click recompose or compose. That will make that back into a shape which is fillable or even possible to put some hatch in. So really nice. So right click, lots of really nice contextual commands. Perhaps I'll go into those in a bit more detail later and also show you how to edit the workspace in another video later on. Okay, let's move on to tip number four. So basically, a lot of people think that you have to use the tab key in order to type in numbers when you're typing in um, distances and so on. Well, actually you don't. The trick here, if you do have a numerical keypad, is to click on the cog up on the data bar and whatever you do, just make sure that you allow numerical keypad entry here. Now I haven't got a big keyboard on my laptop, but I'll allow it anyway. Um, also another little tip here is make sure you just click escape, escape, exits group. So if you double tap escape, when you're in a group, it will exit the group for you. Okay, let's move on to this tip number four. So when I'm drawing, I can draw in any units I like, so I can type in 4,000, hit return, and there's 4 meters. However, a little shortcut is 4M for meters. So basically, Vectorwitz is unit aware, it understands that 4 meters, 4M is 4 meters. Let's also try a little trick here 10 foot, the apostrophe, 6, hit return. Vectorwitz will kindly convert that to 3,200 millimetres for us. So this is excellent. Um, if you are drawing up plans which are done in feet and inches, perhaps older plans, historical drawings, um, you don't have to use a calculator in order to be able to actually type in the distances. So 10m, hit return, brilliant. Let's do that again, 10 foot 6, hit return, converts it to feet and inches for you. Okay. So let's move on to tip number five. And this is actually a very nice one, kind of related a little bit to the first, the, the one before, number four. So basically we can use calculations in our Vectorworks dialogues. So in any of the dialogues, when you see numbers, you can basically click numbers to do calculations. So I've got nine meters there. Let's say I want to divide by something a little bit tricky. I can do divide by five. Click return, fantastic, it's done the calculation for me. Let's go the other way again, let's do multiply by five. Now another thing you will notice is that's quite important are the anchor points. So the anchor points determine where the object will reshape from. So if we indicate this top left hand corner one, when we do divide by five, this point will stay anchored and so on. Okay, fantastic, brilliant tip. You can throw away your calculators, well maybe not. But, you know, any dialogue that you see numbers in with Vectorworks, you can do a calculation. So here's one of my favourite tips for working out um, areas quite early on in the design process. So let's just pretend that we've got a, a space here and we know that the dimension across is, say, six metres. Maybe it's a classroom for a new school. But we've got a specific area that we must meet to meet the requirements of the brief. 
Maybe it's something a little bit awkward like 27 square meters. Well, if you think about it, we can actually type in the equation here. So the trick is to simplify it by typing 27 m, m really there just means 0, 0, 0. Then we do divide by the other dimension without all the zeros, divide by 6. We hit return and we've got 27 square meters perfectly and we hit that straight off. Fantastic. Okay, let's carry on with the hints and tips. So my last hint and tip was about calculating areas. In fact, I skipped a number here. That was actually tip six. Number seven, faster object duplication and creating arrays. So on the Mac or control on the PC, if we hold down the Alt key, we can drag off a copy of an object. So basically, if we do the command duplicate or command D, I'll do it with a shortcut, command D, command D, you can see we can easily create arrays of objects in this way. So hold the command key down, let go, hold command D and repeat, repeat. Now this behavior does depend on one of your Vectorworks preferences. So if we do command comma, that will bring up a Vectorworks preferences and just make sure that you've enabled offset duplications here. Um, a lot of people when I'm teaching don't like this to begin with, but actually when I show them the benefit of having offset duplications on, eventually they become converted. Now a similar uh, array command to that is number eight. Let's have a look at this one. So basically object duplication in place. So normally when you have command D, the shortcut command D, it would duplicate in place unless you've turned on offset duplications, as we talked about. But with this tip, you simply hold down the alt key, a little plus sign pops up and you click. So now you'll see that I've actually got two objects there. So sometimes it's possible to click and start moving the object, type in a distance like six meters that you want to move. And just before I let go, if I hold down the alt key, it will copy and move the object. So now it's very straightforward. I can do command D, command D, and every time I let go, I will basically get a copy, let's do that again, six meters at six meter spacings. So this is quite nice. It's different from the usual duplicate array command, um, which I've also built into the right click on my workspace. This one de demands you actually knowing a little bit more about the size and spacing of the object before you do it. Well, sometimes when you're designing, it just feels about right to place it at a certain distance, let go and duplicate. Fantastic. Okie doke, let's move on to number tip number nine. So this is a really good one. Basically, you can hold the command key down on the Mac while using many of the temporary tools, including the selection tool. Um, it also works on things like the offset, the mirror and the rotate. So let me see if I can show you how this works. Okay, so let's take these three objects here. First of all, I'm going to use the shortcuts for the rotate tool, the mirror tool, and the offset tool. So the shortcut for the rotate tool on my edited workspace is the keyboard shortcut number R, or letter R rather. So if you want to have a look at that, just hover over the shortcuts here, you'll see it says R in the workspace. Now I've actually edited and enhanced this workspace and again I'll be doing a video to show you how to do that later and by all means if you contact me I'll send you a free copy of my enhanced workspace um, for anyone who's interested. So we'll click R but the problem is I didn't select anything. Well if I just hold the command key down temporarily it will give me the selection tool so now I can release, rotate, hold command, temporarily select, release, I'm straight back on the rotate tool hold command and release and rotate. So really nice, you don't have to keep going back up to the selection tool and back to the rotate tool once you've selected the objects. Let's check out how that works with the offset tool. So I'll have this first one selected. What I'm gonna do is double click the shortcut that I have put in for the offset tool. Um, it's O, so double click O. It will pop up with the preferences. Let's leave that at 50 mil and we'll click inside. Well, it's a little bit small. Let's go for 300 mil, like a wall thickness. Click inside. If I hold down the command key, I can now temporarily go to selection mode and offset, temporarily select and offset as well. Fantastic. Finally, let's see how this works with mirror. So I use my shortcut for the mirror tool is going to be 
M for mirror, nice and easy. We'll mirror those. Hold command down, drag around those and select. As soon as I release, I've got my mirror tool. Hold command down, drag, as soon as I release, back onto the mirror tool. So what you will find is this ability to use the command key on the Mac, um, command key on the Windows, basically will allow you temporarily to, op to access the selection tool. Okay, great. Here's another really nice little simple tip for you for changing layers and classes. Basically, rather than going up into organization, uh, maybe selecting a different class or a different design layer, that's fine, we can do that. Or going to the navigator, doing it over here. Personally, I quite like using the keyboard shortcuts, which are basically up and down keys. So command, up and down, will take me through the various layers. If I was to use the left and right keys, then I will go through the classes. You can't really see much going on there. Okay, well, thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the first video on the hints and tips from my book, Innovative Vector with BIM. For those of you who would like to find out a bit more about the book or the kind of training that I can offer, please have a look at the link. The website is www.jra-vectorwitz-cad .co.uk. I've got this as a hyperlink in my file, so if we click on that, just going to have a quick visit on the website. So here's the front page, there we go, there's me. And if you're interested in finding out a bit more about the hints and tips or the book, please click on the store page and Innovative Vector It's BIM. And here we can see we've got the full book in uh, full Technicolor 24.95. If you just want a PDF copy that we can uh, send you via email, it's £15. Uh, international delivery, £30. And also, you can also buy just the hints and tips for £10. Okay, well, that just about wraps up this video. Thanks for listening. See you next time.